All right. Morning, everybody. Uh, today, by Facebook request, I was asked to upload um, the 2011 uh, CFAX Evo touring car, the one with the higher top deck that I ran at uh, Snowbirds and a couple other races. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. A um, little bit of backstory behind this car. Uh, I had been at top. And then we were working on um, like the, the next evolution of it. And um, some interesting things happened there and I wound up not being with them anymore. So I made that car. And then uh, um, from there we converted over to this one. And the, the big thing that I was looking at with this car, and I can show you uh, from this other car behind me later, but uh, I wanted to release the bulkheads. So one, I wanted to raise the diff so it was easy to do with just some carbon. But I also wanted to release this portion of the bulkhead and make it so that we could change the amount of chassis flex that ran through the rear section section of the car to try and gain more grip. At the time, we were everybody was really playing with a lot of flex. And uh, I didn't like how all the other motor mounts had um, basically only a single screw here and no screw here. So the, the flex on the chassis was never balance correctly which as you see with today's turn cars everything's on center line and they've they've totally changed the structure of all that so all that's been drastically improved and again trying to get some of the same flex characteristics balanced to front to rear i did the same style up here in the front uh releasing the bulkhead so i could take the shims in or out and uh and lower that however i i preferred the differentials up so I just got rid of the ears off the chassis so we had a little bit more ground clearance and roll. Um, but that was kind of the, the brief on all that. So in SolidWorks, there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do, especially with all the, uh, the materials and the appearance. So you can see I have kind of the carbon look here, but a lighter color on this one. I have brass here. Um, these were actually Delrin aluminum, whatever. So this one is from an old SolidWorks file. So you can see the graphic doesn't really look cool. So I'm going to change that right now before I update that to GrabCAD. I've had some people that are learning SolidWorks ask me to show some features and stuff in it so they can see how I did some of the, like our Red RC pictures and things like that. So you can open up this little sidebar that they have here. Appearance. Oops, forgot a step. Um, so this was an old material for carbon fiber. You can see like some old plaid shirt looking thing. The I have 2015, so I don't know what any of the current material files look like as far as their, their textures and everything. So I just use this Zoltec Panex. Now you can see it makes this really fine structure. So that's when I go into appearance. I can go into color and darken this up a little bit to the typical color I would use. And then you go over into mapping. Now mapping, I always use one inch for this pattern or 25.4 millimeters. Enter it into the first one, enter it in the second one, and it updates. So from there, now it looks like the other models that I have in the car. I can bounce back here. Ooh, sounds like everybody's home. Apologize for the creaky floor. Send a message real quick. Um, so that was basically that. Now when I did like the image that is going to be on the thumbnail for this video, one of the things you can do is you can go into photorealistic in SolidWorks. So that's photorealistic, gives kind of the mirror look. Uh, I drop all the edges that I like to have on to be able to draw. Now, a lot of times, for my preference, this is too dark, and I also want to change the background here. So I just change the colors. Document scene background. Then I have a light color. And I have one of the 3D connection uh, space balls. 
So all you do is if you lightly put your finger on it, you lose all that crazy drop shadow. Now you can go into some of the, um, the lighting settings and appearance for the file, and you can put in a bunch of lighting and all that stuff, but I don't, I don't spend a lot of time playing with all that stuff. So I just simply set my finger on it. The shading goes away. I can take some good screenshots and pictures that I drop into uh, either Corel or Adobe and add some text and stuff. And this is how I did our basic stuff. Real, real simple and easy just to make some fun CAD pictures. So I turn all this stuff off and just go back to my default. And save it. Now, what I'm going to do is upload this into uh, GrabCAD. So in here, they actually have a real cool setup where you can do Pack and Go. Pack and Go basically takes all the files that are in here, gives you one instance of them, and it will flatten them into a single folder. So I can go into this one. I can make a new folder, grab can, all right, show it up here. If you want, you can add prefix or suffixes to these. So if you're sending parts back and forth to different people, you can get, uh, you know, like a, like a revision status on it. Um, so that's all set up. And uploading. Now, you may have seen in my structure, I have a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> if I go all the way back to like my main file and check, just to give you an idea of, of how much stuff I've drawn over the years and how much I enjoy drawing, uh, there's 10,956 files with uh, 959 folders. So there's a lot of CAD in here. So some of it's kind of messy. It's going to take me a while to, to get through all of it and get a lot of this stuff uploaded. But, uh, you know, I have everything from uh, mis miscellaneous manufacturer files where I would draw stuff either for a company or I would do like uh, what we do in automotive now, uh, competitor benchmarking. So I would get different things and measure them up and Draw them up so that way I had I had some references on what what our competitors were doing. I mean it's 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 an important part of any product development to to know what you're up against. So um, this whole project was down here in cars. Not that one. Turn car. So in here, the original photon that I did for top. Then the the first evolution I did, which Failed pretty badly because our supplier totally hosed us on the steel for our motor plates, so they bent. Um, but it's a car I won, I think, the 2010 Carpet Nationals with. So I'll, I'll show that car in a later video. But And then some other stuff. And some cars you guys, this one you guys had seen, that is actually uh, the car behind me that I did with my dad with the... Um, like associated style uh, dynamic front strut front end corners. And then this one is something very unique. So we'll, we'll get into those at a much later date. Um, okay, but now I come in here and switch to to grab kid. All right. So in here, I'm going to upload a new model. All right. Now the first one I'm going to do is the actual car itself to just to make sure it's on the top of the list here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
Good time. Good time. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I'll come up in a few minutes. Sorry. No, you're fine. All right. Um, and I will fill all the rest of this stuff out later. Um, but we are going to publish. I'll come back on all that. All right, so that is now up with the main uh, assembly file. Um, what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to go back in here to edit, and I'm going to add a whole bunch of files. And basically what GrabCAD, or excuse me, what SolidWorks does with Pack and Go is it takes, even though, like, um, I'll show you real quick, even though I have all of my items in all these different folders, so, like, I have a hardware section that has all my screws and and nuts, bolts, washers, tie rods, spur gears, pinions, yeah, bearings, everything all separated out. Um, what I can do is GrabCAD when you do, or GrabCAD SolidWorks with Pack and Go, stuffs all that stuff into one folder. So here's all the fasteners. Here's all the different stuff. So it really makes it doing like these type of uploads really easy. And after this, I just delete this, this file. But this is what I would typically do if I was sending stuff overseas or to uh, anybody else I was working with with some CAD. So I, I skipped the assembly file, but all the rest of this can go. And now anybody who downloads the entire set gets the assembly file structure that's already in here, plus all the parts. So when they open it, it actually works like it's supposed to. So, and then from there it's done. The only thing that's a little bit published and from there, the only thing that's a little bit annoying with GrabCAD is it wants to upload a screenshot or a 3D, um, excuse me, screenshot of every single item in here. So I usually take those and there's an area here that says hidden from gallery. And it, I don't think the file needs to have all these. If somebody wants to download these, they can. So I'll take like the screws and you can, you have to drag and drop them. But I just drag all these down to get them out of the way because I don't think anybody really wants to play with a 3D model of a screw. Or I don't see it. So, so that's pretty much it. I'll come back to all these and clean up some of this stuff later and, uh, you know, put in some more details and some tags and some stuff like that. So, but that's pretty much it. So, um, now let's see. Again, how I was talking about how this car had the bulkheads release so that it would flex was again trying to make more traction. So, I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. And this is one of the things with everybody shortening the the bolt pattern between the bulkheads here. And back through the car so it's hard to see but i have the spacers out so this whole section of the rear of the car is not connected just to kind of exaggerate this but even if it's just a little bit of mount when you accelerate i think you can see maybe not you can kind of see the whole car flex and you'll see the rear belt tighten the front belt loosen and this is the type of things that were, I think, very, very sensitive to changing traction uh, at times where all the manufacturers have kind of copied each other on what they're using for, for bulkhead spacings and things like that. And that's why. So anytime you move these bulkheads in or out or you're changing the whole patterns underneath, you're, you're changing the whole flex of the car, not only in torsional, but also in this kind of like dragster pullback type motion. So there's a lot of stuff like that that I was really curious about. And in all these cars that I've designed, and a lot of them that really suck, uh, it's always been trying to find and isolate what does what. Just trying to understand what um, what different you know things do, let alone suspension geometry, but just how the car reacts to uh, different inputs. It's kind of like how, again, 
you look at old term cars, their servos actually ran try this side, ran front to back with the tie link tie rod going this direction. The problem was as they would turn one direction, you had flex on it this way, you know, loading the car as it pushed through the, the system. So you would kind of bow the chassis down where the other direction it would pull it up. So now, at least when you're turning, your loads that you're putting in from your servo and that force is all equal. So that's one of the big reasons why you don't see turning cars with the servo mounted sideways anymore. So everything matters. It just matter. It's just finding out how much it matters to what degree, and trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, Hit the uh, subscribe and like button if you want to. And uh, like I said, any questions, either post them on Facebook or uh, here on YouTube. And I will get to them and and uh, get them loaded up. And if anybody wants any other particular models here in a, in a hurry, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll just kind of keep working through them and uploading some every few days. All right. Thanks and have a great week.